Glenn Parker High Vibration Foundation. I wanted to talk about, uh, I was at an event, a gathering a couple weeks ago, and I had this idea, and I finally been able to get this done, <clears throat> of the teacher and the student, the idea of the teacher and the student. And in this particular gathering, it was um, a particular belief system, and you know, there were, um, it was new and there was different people there. There's a lot of new people there, including myself. And I just really got, um, there was a, there was a master there of some sort that was speaking to everybody that was going from place to place and, and having conversations. And there was a lot of supplication in this particular type of ideal. And, you know, meaning that you had to proselytize and, um, that there was something higher and, and bigger than yourself not equal, but bigger and better that you had to proselytize to and um, that the teacher was all-knowing and, uh, you know, he was a man, uh, the women really got to hold those types of positions, had a problem with that too. <clears throat> I'm not going to name what kind of gathering it was, but or what organization it was with, but the, the core idea of it is everybody is equal. Um, and those types of ideas are starting to become outmoded once you understand that everything is here and now and once you understand that there is only one moment in creation and it's just you in your universe dreaming up everybody else by agreement and experiencing them in your own way that everything is equal and everyone and every moment is equal it's everything in Every moment is fundamentally neutral. It has no meaning. It's the meaning you attach to it. So the meaning that you attach to it is what in your belief systems constructs your energy state to realize the next moment. So if you believe that you know, you're getting out of bed and you're walking to the, to the bathroom, then that's what you're going to experience in the next moment. But if you truly believe that you were in a different place and a different time or... <clears throat> A different reality you could just as, as easily be there provided that it was in the construct of the collective agreement of where you were going because you know you couldn't just go outside and start flying around even though you have the ability to do so unless it was within the collective agreement because you know you want to freak everybody out that is still in the 3d 3d reality that will continue to stay in the 3d reality so those types of ideas <clears throat> so master and student where there is always learning on both sides anyway. I do life coach and a, and, a, and a business consultant. And there's I always learn from my clients as much as they learn from me. And it is a very mutual type of exchange. You know, the research that I do, a lot of times there's a, lot of, there's a ton of synchronicity with my clients. The things that I'm working on for them um, are generally things that I either have worked on or are working on or they're being refined during that process. So there's always some synergy there. So I couldn't say that I know I'm the master and I'm going to teach the student because I'm learning just as much. It is equal. It is always is equal. <clears throat> so if you find yourself in a system at all that you're finding that there's supplication, you know, that you need to bow down to a higher authority of whatever sort it actually is. It doesn't matter what belief system it is. And you might want to step back and type and take a little examination of that. And, uh, you know, some of these systems that still supplicate women, they can't hold these higher authority, like master type of positions or do these other types of things. I think that's, you know, intellectually and at all levels, they're equals. So basically, it's <clears throat> very old ideals being spun around and around over and over again. <clears throat> but I think the thing that I really took back from it was how indentured they were in their belief system and how they weren't able, because of this fear of this proselytization that, you know, whether you think you're going to go to hell or you think you're going to go through a karmic cycle. There's always a punishment, a proselytizing type of thing happening on if you don't do what you're told. <clears throat> that whatever you want to call it, God, God, Yahweh, high power, organic connection between all living things, whatever you want to call it, is going to punish you because it is infinite love, by the way. <clears throat> it's going to punish you for not doing what it says because you didn't quite know better or... 
you know, you need to go through another karmic cycle because you were not eating the things you weren't supposed to be eating or you didn't do this types of things or you didn't do that types of things is, from a logic standpoint, is kind of of ridiculous. (laughs) But, and I'm not putting down any of those types of ideals and belief systems. They are very useful. They have been useful for thousands of years. They have kept and helped organize and raise consciousness over time. I just think in this day and age that it's time that, and it's it's possible now to realize more of yourself and that you are a greater being and that there's more of you than what you realize. Even if you spent 50 years with your life partner or your wife, your husband, <clears throat> whoever it is, there is a lot more to them than you realize. There's a lot more to you than you realize. And this is a day and age where you can realize that. You can actually remember your entire being and integrate yourself as a full holistic being in this day and age, in these next, what is it now? This is 20, 2014, it's 2015, the next five years, whoo, five years. Whew, that's crazy. In the next five years, and probably over the next couple of years for some of us, reintegrate yourself into your full holistic self and remember all of yourself, or at least a very, very large portion of yourself. <clears throat> and that was your goal, that was your the fun, the play that you wanted to do in this lifetime, is not to learn anything new, is to re-remember all these past things that you've already learned, even waking up and realizing what you are, not integrating fully as a holistic being, but realizing that you are more and maybe even getting back into collective consciousness type of idea and remembering most of what you are. Excuse me, but in this lifetime, the idea is to reintegrate and to have first contact and to start having more assistance from other beings all across the galaxy. So I believe that's what I wanted to share, this idea of proselytizing, that there's a master, that there's a teacher, it's all equal. There's always learning from on all ends of the scale. You know, when you see a kid, even in kindergarten, doing things, the teacher is still always learning from them and getting new ideas. Now, you know, not so much in those lower grades, but as time goes on, there's always learning from all people, every, in every moment, all those exchanges. You're a different person, even genetically, they know that you're a different person from moment to moment because you're constantly learning, you're constantly changing. <clears throat> so these ideas that you're put into this focused system where you can only see what you can what you can do, you can only proselytize, you can only, you know, go through this karmic cycle or you have to go every Sunday to go go, go do this or go do that or whatever it happens to be. They close off the ability to learn from each other because this person is the master and, and you're the learner, so I know I've been doing this for 20 years or what have you, and you need to listen to me. And uh, even school teachers and whatnot, a lot of times when I was in school, I would say, you know, that's wrong. He's like, what do you mean? I'm like, well, that's wrong. Well, if you don't write the, that, the answer that I'm expecting on the test, then I'm going to mark it as an incorrect answer. I'm like, even though I can prove to you that this very moment in time, which I went and did, I went and grabbed a different book and I showed him, I'm like, you know, I've done this before this particular answer that is wrong in the book, in the the actual, you know, book itself, in high school somewhere. He's like, okay, well, I said, well, how about if we do this? Because he was a pretty closed-minded person, but he did take to this idea, which was nice. I'm like, if, since you've taught everybody that this is the right answer, if they answer in that fashion, that they're correct. However, if people write, or circle this other answer, can you go to them and ask them why they circle that answer, and if they answer you correct with the correct answer that's supposed to be the correct answer, that they're correct. And he actually said, sure, well, I mean, we'll add a fight with them quite a bit, but he actually agreed to do that. And I think it's a prime example of master teacher, if it's like, no, that book is right, because it's from an authority higher than I am, you know, what is there ever any learning? Nothing is ever equal if you're just caught in the same system over and over. And I think that's the idea, is to break those types of systems and to break that type of ideal and to go back to knowing that you are equal to all things, the rock, your laptop, your phone, these puka shells, um, to me, to ev- <coughs> to God, to all that is, everything, whatever you want to call it, equal, all things are equal, is really the primary idea I was trying to get across. And uh, I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to share. And I'm going to have a good glass of water and go chill out. Thank you very much. Love and light and have a fantastic day.